Happy Easter, Home Slice! And yes, I did buy Easter Bunny ears entirely for this video. Alright, now let's get this out of the way. Easter is a weird holiday. First off, why did they play the Ten Commandments at Easter? Moses died like a thousand years before Jesus, so that doesn't make sense. So what's the deal with that? Hey everyone, um, I just want to clarify. I just looked into it, and apparently the Ten Commandments is played on TV this time of year because it's in celebration of Passover, not Easter. That makes a lot more sense. Enjoy the video. And secondly, what is up with the Easter Bunny? Why does he have just a complete lack of lore? I mean, Rankin Bass made several Easter Bunny movies, two of which were origin movies, and they completely contradict each other. And today, I'm actually going to be talking about one of those movies. In honor of Easter, I will be reviewing Here Comes Peter Cottontail, the movie. Now this was actually a sequel to the 1971 movie, Here Comes Peter Cottontail, but of course none of the original cast is in it, and it has a completely different art style. And this movie, it feels low budget, despite having some pretty big names attached to it, which we will get to. So without further ado, let's just get started. So this movie opens on an extremely long opening title sequence, and then we meet the film's narrator, Seymour S. Sassafras, who's the same narrator from the first movie. However, in the original he was voiced by Danny Kaye, and he was designed to look like Danny Kaye. So the question is, why didn't they make it a different character? Because he's designed completely differently, and it's not like they designed him to look like the actor, because the last time I checked, Christopher Lloyd does not look like this. Soon, Peter Cottontail will be hopping down the bunny trail. So basically, he just recounts the events of the first film, and how Peter Cottontail defeated the evil Iron Tail. And they use clips from the original movie, which feels out of place with this movie's art style, but moving on. Here we are, April Valley, where all the magic happens. Easter magic, that is. And everybody's getting ready for the big day. Wait, what? Everybody's getting ready for the big day. The big gay? Big day. You all hear that too, right? Big day. Seems legit. So here we get to see April Valley in a very silly symphony kind of way. We get to see how the Easter Bunny does what he does. What does the Easter Bunny do? Because I feel like with Santa, we had a very clear idea what he did. Elves made the toys, he delivered them with a sleigh pulled by reindeer. Not that difficult to understand. But what does the Easter Bunny do? Like, he's making all these chocolate eggs, but I don't know. Easter Bunny's weird. What does a rabbit have to do with eggs? I don't think rabbits lay eggs. Do they? Probably not. And you know what, let's just get this out of the way now. Let's talk about the design of the characters. So, they're bunnies. What's something we all know about bunnies? They're cute. They're cuddly, they're soft, they're bunnies. So why did they do this? Look at that, that is so ugly. And like, the main character is a bunny and we have to look at this the entire time. <laughs> you are my bestest friend. What is that thing? He's so ugly, I love him. So then the nougat machine is caught on fire because someone was supposed to be watching it, but wasn't. So Peter Cottontail heroically uses the foam from Ang Lee's Hulk to put out the fire. And it turns out the person who was supposed to be watching this was Peter Cottontail Jr. But he was busy testing out one of his new inventions. So Peter goes to have a conversation with his son. Now I should point out, both Peter Cottontail and Peter Cottontail Jr. are both voiced by Tom Kenny. Yeah, Tom Kenny. Why did he agree to do this? It's not like he was desperate for money. I'm pretty sure SpongeBob alone paid for his house. Do they have dirt on him or something? Is he being blackmailed? Tom, blink twice if you're in trouble. So we get the basic father-son type of conflict in a movie, you know? Peter Sr. is like, oh, we gotta do things the traditional way. And Peter Jr. is like, but I'm an inventor. I can do more things with it. You know, it's a story I heard a million times. Okay, the fact that he's an inventor, not relevant to the story. When I was watching this, I thought maybe he was going to use one of his inventions to like save the day. He doesn't. So let's get all hope out of the way there. And Peter tells the story of how he defeated Iron Tail for the hundredth time already. Have I ever told you the story of Iron Tail? His, His evil, evil trickery, trickery almost, almost ruined, ruined Easter, Easter forever. forever. Have I told you this before? Once or twice. I feel like it's the story he brings up at every dinner party. Someone will be like, my son got a science trophy at school. And then Peter's just like, yeah, well, I defeated Iron Tail and now I'm the Easter Bunny. So we're all doing things. So yeah, after the cliche father-son stuff, we get a song. And other than the weird art style, this song's kind of good. And 
I don't know if like Peter Jr. is supposed to be like, I gotta call him PJ. I don't know if PJ is supposed to be the one singing because it's clearly not Tom Kenny's voice. I guess it's maybe like a Phil Collins and Tarzan kind of thing. And I thought that was weird at first. Then I realized there was a time when Tom Kenny's voice wasn't the one for his character singing and it was the greatest moment of his career. Outside of April Valley, the world was wrapped in winter and kids everywhere were more than ready for spring. Mom, will winter ever be over? Well, first it's gonna be spring and then it's gonna come back as winter again and it's gonna do that on repeat and at one point we're gonna think we're good and it's gonna be spring and then we're gonna get winter again. Did I mention this was Canada? So this is where we meet one of the main villains of the film, Jackie Frost, played by Molly Shannon. Dear old Jack is so last century. Yeah, so what happened to Jack Frost? If this is supposed to be in the Rankin Bass universe, why isn't he there? You mentioned him, he's real in the movie's universe. So like, where is he? This is kind of just introducing us to the villain. We get more of her later, but uh, back at April Valley, we get a scene between Peter 1 and Peter 2. Peter 3! Where Peter Sr. decided he wanted to give his son more responsibility. We also get a weird dialogue exchange that sounds like it was written by a stepdad who was trying to sound cool. Can I, you know, trick it out a little? Take it from analog to digital? Slap on some subwoofers? Really make the bass tones pop? <laughs> No, no, no. So Peter Sr. gives PJ a very important task. He's to clean out the clock of spring, which basically makes spring happen. I, I don't know, it's weird. It's also like powered by a spring called the spring of spring. Ha, get it? And it's solid gold, it's, I don't understand. And in order for him to do this job, Peter gives him the key to the clock. What was that? Uh, <clears throat> nothing. Here we go. What was that? I actually don't know. I've watched this a couple times. Like, yeah, what is that? It's... I don't even know. I, I can't even make a joke about it. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Don't lose it. <laughs> Obviously, right? And do not, do not leave the case unlocked. If anything happens... I know, I'm responsible. All right, so how long till he screws it up? I mean, come on, this is very clearly setting up that he's gonna screw up somehow. I mean, you can't just give a kid... I don't know how old he's supposed to be. You can't just give a kid a thing and say, you can't do this and then uh, they don't do it. I don't know where I was going with that sentence. But the point is, he's gonna screw it up. We know that. So the next scene takes place at Jackie Frost's Ice Palace, where she just has this weird hatred for spring. I get it, she's the winter person, but like, winter ends, it's gonna come back. It happens every year. You just get the section of the year that's not winter. I don't know what she's so mad about. And then she sings like a really weird, seductive song. This was a kid's movie, right? It's a nice life. <laughs> oh, well, thumpity thump thump, look at Frosty go. This is weird. The song is so out of nowhere. I get that it's a kid's holiday special, so like a villain song is kind of warranted, but like. I don't remember Burger Meister Meister Burger getting this seductive. I'm not gonna cut to a clip of that because why the heck would I? But basically she's evil Elsa. That's what she is. However, she works alone. She doesn't have any partners. Well, okay, until now. A mysterious man in a hood shows up. And who is it? The name's Tail. Iron Tail. The evil Iron Tail. And he is played by James Bond himself. Earlier than that. Okay, a little more. Nope, nope, that's too far. There you go. Roger Moore. See, that's why he introduced himself like that, because James Bond. And the two of them decide to team up and sabotage Spring, because he also doesn't like Spring, because he's not the Easter Bunny. I don't know. Maybe there's some context in the first movie that I forgot about, but I don't know. He, he doesn't like Spring either. So they show up at the clock and they find PJ cleaning it. I'm sorry, do I know you? No, oh dear boy, I grew up here. And I guess he just doesn't know who Iron Tail is. He says that the story's been told to him multiple times, but like, I guess if he hasn't seen him, did his dad not describe what he looks like or sounds like? Well, I guess in the first movie he was Vincent Price, now he's Roger Moore, so maybe that's the big difference, I don't know. But the point is, PJ's an idiot. Don't worry, Junior. I'll finish polishing the clock. You will? With pleasure. Um... You're gonna need this. See, he's an idiot. He didn't think that was odd. His dad literally told him not to do that. 
and he did it. The next scene he was in, after he was told not to do that, he did the very thing he wasn't supposed to do. And he is the hero. But anyway, they steal the Spring of Spring. And PJ's not there because he's down at the Calendar Day Festival. What is Calendar Day? I don't know. Isn't every day Calendar Day? They're just flipping the thing to say what the date is. Oh. March 32nd. And I'm gonna be honest, if April 1st wasn't coming up, I would just assume it was a prank. Hey, Cottontail, is this some kind of joke? See, he thought so. But because the spring was stolen, it's no longer spring in April Valley. PJ discovers this, and he's so heartbroken by what he did that he runs away. So Peter Cottontail Sr. and Antoine the Caterpillar decide to go out looking for him. Antoine, I can't get across! Never fear, Peter. I will find your boy. You're a rabbit. Just hop over the bridge. I'm sure the water's not that deep, maybe? It doesn't even look that far. Is there no other way out of April Valley? You don't have to send just the slow French caterpillar. I think he just didn't want to go and he was looking for an excuse. So Antoine goes alone. And I'm gonna be honest, Antoine is my favorite part about this movie. He just gets his own little scenes every so often and they're actually somewhat amusing. Back at Jackie Frost's place, we get this. Freeze. 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 What the hell was that? So the two of them now decide that spring wasn't enough, and now they're gonna take over summer. Why wasn't that the plan before? Was their original plan just for winter to be slightly longer because there's no spring? I need to ask. Maybe it's because I'm from Canada. Is spring real? It doesn't really seem like we get spring. We get warm winter and then cold summer and then it's summertime. Spring is not real. I don't believe in it. It doesn't really make sense because they took spring away, but summer's gonna happen. Is there no build up to the summer? This plan makes no sense. So PJ runs all the way to Summer Hill where he meets Keenan Thompson as a robin. And I wanna point out this bird does not shut up. And my feathers, you definitely scratched my feathers. Now wait, you just- And I itch now. Neither does his mom. What have you done to him? What were you thinking? He's molting. He's smaller than the other birds and you done gave him lice? But the bird's mom convinces him to help PJ find the clock of summer while she stays behind and sits on his brother. He's still in the egg. That makes more sense. But they're too late. The sun of summer is gone. And then we get a scene of Antoine. Don't worry, Junior. I am on my way. So then we get a weird scene of a mouse played by Miranda Cosgrove. And I already forgot her name. It doesn't matter. She's first dragging food through a cornfield, and then she runs into a cat, runs away from the cat, and then gets picked up by a bird, and then the robin is chasing the bird to save the mouse. And at this point, I'm just like, what was wrong with ripping off Christmas movies for Easter? They weren't original, but they were memorable. They were entertaining. I mean, both Winnie the Pooh and VeggieTales made an Easter carol, and those were both fine. Like, you could do that again. At Christmas this year, I watched a movie called Fat Man, where this kid got cold for Christmas, so he hired a hitman to kill Santa. You could do that. Do that as Easter. The kid got, like, a rotten egg or whatever the Easter Bunny does for bad kids, so he hires a hunter to kill the Easter Bunny. That could be good. Call it... Call it Fluffy Boy? I'm just brainstorming here. Oh, uh. <laughs> I'm kidding, he, he catches her. Gotcha! Now the three of them team up. So we've got a trio of Nickelodeon actors, and they're on their way to the Clock of Fall. But we get Antoine again. Oh, I love watermelon! So they get to the Clock of Fall just as the bad guys are robbing it. But the gang manages to steal the pieces back and Iron Tail steals them back almost immediately after. Iron Tail! What? Wait, I knew that. You should have known that too, idiot. All hope is lost. Your baby brother is never gonna hatch. Your family is never gonna have anything to eat. To the extreme, apparently. And that's where they find Colorland, where every color that's ever existed is. And get this, they meet Seymour S. Sassafras. And he like narrates out loud as things are happening. It's a little weird. It makes me question how this world works, but you know, it's a cartoon. I can let it slide. So then Mr. Sassafras puts them in a magical bubble that can take them to where they need to be. Then we get a music sequence with a completely unjustified father-son montage. I mean, they had what, two scenes together? And we didn't really learn much about them other than Peter Sr. is the Easter Bunny, Peter Jr wants to do new things, it, as cut and paste as it can be. And we get an Antoine scene. I meant to do that! 
and back in the bubble, they hear a strange noise and they just immediately panic. But it was nothing to fear, it was just talking wind. Played by David Koechner. Yeah, this scene goes on way too long. As do most scenes in this movie. It's only an hour and like 10 minutes long, but boy do I wish it was shorter. And he eventually agrees to help them get to the winter clock. Mr. Sazafras said if we ever needed to get down, just pull the ripcord. <laughs> Why doesn't the bird fly? Anyway, they get to where they need to be. And they just easily sneak past the guards at the Winter Palace. I mean, they are just penguins. I don't know how that'd be hard to get away from. And then we get like a action scene. It's just kind of throwing things back and forth and a bunch of other BS happens. And then we get a slide chase that both bad guys end up crashing on the slide and the good guys escape. At this point, you're wondering, okay, so they got all the pieces. Why isn't the bird just fly them to where they need to be? What is up with that? the mouse and Peter Jr., they can get home at their earliest convenience. Their main priority is the seasons here. Why does the bird not just take them? I'm starting to think this bunny movie is really dumb. And then we get a confrontation right outside the clock of winter and they negotiate a bit and a bunch of other BS happens, which leads to the bad guys falling off the cliff, even though Jackie Frost can fly. I don't know why she didn't do that. And then the Robin goes down and like when I watched this, I was like, okay, they're gonna like save the villains because it's like, just cause they're the bad guys doesn't mean they have to die. And I was like, okay, that could work. But no, the Robin just goes and saves the pieces and straight up lets the villains die. That's murder, he murdered them. Or I guess it's attempted murder cause they do survive, but we'll get to that. So suddenly Antoine and the wind arrive and they just take them all home. So yeah, seasons are saved, everyone goes home and villains return and uh, he uses the key to the clock to help freeze them and the movie's over. If it felt like I was rushing there at the end it's because I was, because the movie was, and yeah that's the end of the movie. Things to make your Easter brighter. Or is it? Yeah, so this movie was bad. Frankly, if you want to watch an Easter movie, just watch the original Peter Cottontail. It's rank and bass, they never fail. I don't know, maybe if you had like really young kids and you just wanted to keep them quiet for about an hour, maybe they'd enjoy this, but I don't really see anything redeemable. And like, why did some of these actors agree to do this? Okay, Miranda Cosgrove I get, this is before iCarly, but like the rest of them. I mean, Roger Moore's freaking James Bond. Then again, I guess Sean Connery did this, so it's not that weird. Tom Kenny, he had SpongeBob, one of the most popular cartoons at the time. Christopher Lloyd, Back to the Future, you did not need to do this. Anyway, that was Here Comes Peter Cottontail the movie. That's all from me. Be safe, be smart, and have fun. Peace out, Home Slice, and Happy Easter. And now, an important message. Thinking of buying your kids a real rabbit for Easter? Think again. Rabbits are not toys. They are not a disposable short-term commitment. They are intelligent, living creatures who require extensive attention and care, just like a dog or a cat. If you are committing to a rabbit, you should be ready to commit with the same vet bills, long lifespan, and amount of care time as these other pets. Shelters always see a large influx in rabbits a few months after Easter. Many of these bunnies have been left outside to fend for themselves. Domestic rabbits are not wild rabbits and cannot survive on their own. If your kids are truly ready for the long-term commitment of a major pet, by all means, get them a rabbit. But if you just want one as a cute Easter present, make it chocolate. Happy Easter.